joined in 2004 when it was college, college use only. I think you had to have a college email address to join. And I was very into it at the time. That was before it was retrofitted and opened up. Sorry, that was before I fit it in. <laughs> and then a few years ago, I just completely backed off. I think I was going on maybe once every three to four months or so. So opposite side of the spectrum. And now I'd say I, I found a happy medium where now I go on maybe about once or twice a week or so. Now I know some of you are thinking, that's it? How can you survive? And others are thinking, that often? Where do you find the time? <laughs> So I thought, I've been getting this feedback from friends and family, so I took a brief survey, and if you don't mind, I'd like to share my results. Um, a little disclaimer, this is only eight people, so it might not represent the whole population, but of my findings, I found that 63% use Facebook, that's five people, 25% don't use Facebook, and 12% said, what is Facebook? <laughs> that was just my grandma. <laughs> Again, it might not represent the whole population. Um, and also in the survey, I discussed the pros and cons, so I'd like to share some of those results with you as well. Uh, these are in no particular order, but they are corresponding, so um, each, each one is corresponding to the next. Sorry. Can you see it enough? So I'll start with one on the pro side. We have ease of day-to-day -day communication. I think this is a big feedback I got back. Uh, for example, I insisted my dad join when I was traveling through South America and couldn't be bothered to email him every single day. I said, look, I don't need to even want to go on the computer, but my friends are posting pictures of you, so you have to join Facebook, and then you'll know I'm okay without me even going on the computer. Uh, however, on the con side, we have that it's artificial communication. So it's a replacement, but not, it, it could be a replacement, but not as good as face-to-face -face or phone conversations. I used to not really believe that as much, but I think over time, it's a feeling you get. You really do lose a human connection, so I think that's pretty valid. Uh, on the pro side, similar number one, it saves time. I love how um, when you're doing an event and you can just send it out, it automatically tallies yes, no, and maybes. And I remember back in the day, I used to have to tally those by time, so, or by hand, so it saves time. However, on the con side, opposite, opposite of that, we have, it's addictive, you get sucked in and waste time. I have numerous friends in college that would spend hours upon hours upon hours every day, and I don't know, just updating and browsing and searching, and so I think it could be a big time waster as well. On the pro side, number three is share and store photos, stories, interests, etc., and with, through that self-expression. Um, my biggest thing that I was using it for when I was traveling was just sharing photos. I think people are way less, in my experience, people are way less likely to email or send a CD or a USB or something. So I don't think I'd have half the photos I have without Facebook. But on the con side, and this was actually probably the biggest con I got from people, that uh, there's no privacy or limited privacy. So even with the settings, people see, may see more than you may want them to. And I have several uh, examples of that. First of all, I think a lot of people, including my dad, don't even know how to use the settings. Even if you do, you can't control, there's limited control of what gets up there. So I sent a uh, texted a photo to my friend of when I had this allergy and I had this Angelina Jolie lips and uh, she keeps threatening me, threatening me that she's going to post it on Facebook. So I can control what's on my page, but she could still post it and everyone could still see it. Also, even even if you don't know some things that you're putting up, they you might not be aware of what might hurt you. My cousin got into some trouble. Uh, with the police, he got attacked outside of the Wiener Schnitzel on Bascom and uh, ended up getting into some serious trouble. However, his mom went on Facebook, found his attacker's uh, page, and printed out his status, which was bragging about how he beat up this guy. So he got his charges knocked, my cousin got his charges knocked away down. And the other guy got in a lot more trouble because of his bragging and his status. So you might not even realize some things that you're putting up that might with some of my old high school friends. So that was a big pro for me. 
but you still don't know everything is completely true. And lastly, the pro side network advertised for business clubs, like Toastmasters, and other organizations. If it's good for business, get more clients, that's always a big pro, that's always good. But on the cons, it distracts from work. I have a manager, I, or a manager in my office wants to just block Facebook so it, you can, we can prevent it from being abused, abused at the office. I don't think it's being abused now, but if it was being abused, I think we'd consider blocking it. So it can be good for business and bad for business. These are, these are some of the pros and cons I got in my survey. Uh, I know there's different sides of the spectrum here, and um, hopefully, hopefully just being aware of some of these, you won't be as extreme. Again, if you are extreme, no judgment, but <laughs> I try to, ha to find a happy balance, uh, not on Facebook 24-7 or believing Facebook is the devil. <laughs> So my point is that I have a moderate view. I think I found a happy ground uh, medium. And always go with the age old saying,